Bibles to Luke chapter 8. Sister Felicia, I saw your hand just now, kind of late. You can stand up. Oh, thank you. No problem. I just want to say, I am very thankful for you, Bobby. Uh, you know, I, I have, since I was a little girl, you know, raising me up to be the best woman I can be and love me unconditionally. Like, that is truly a blessing. <laughs> I thank God for that. I love all of you, all my family. I just want to let you know I love you all. Love you too. And tell Poppy I said happy Father's Day. Amen. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Yes, indeed. Amen. Luke chapter 8, we'll find a place to stand together. At this time, 
they was challenged to the point where they began to even fear for their lives. And it's really something that as I was looking at this and I said, you know, the truth is we all are challenged one way or another to grow up from being a child to beginning to be mature in the Christian faith. And those storms are hard. And a lot of times you don't even know how to tell people what you're going through. You don't even know how to verbalize it, amen? But you just know that there is something going on and you can't quite put your fingers on it and you can't quite understand what is happening. But let me just say this to you, that many times if you will just continue to move forward, before you know it, you will understand what it was all about. See, Jesus told the disciples that it was time to go to the other side. There was a reason why Jesus said it, amen? There was a reason why the disciples had to go from one side of the lake to the other. And there's a reason why you had to begin to walk in maturity, amen? Let me give you three things that happened. Well, I'm going to give you one thing, and I'm going to give you three things all for the one, if that makes any sense. Amen. I really only have one point, but it's something what's under. You'll get it in a minute. Turn your Bibles to Mark chapter 5. Don't laugh at me, Brother Edgar. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Mark chapter 5. And look at verse 1. It came over unto the other side and looked down at verse 1. Bible says, and they came over to the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. Amen? Mm -hmm. Who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no doubt with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him. Fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains, in the tombs, crying, cutting himself with stones. Let me just start by saying this. This man was in bad shape. Y'all hear me today? I mean, he was totally under demonic control. Yes, possession. Somebody told me that there's two ways that you can be under demonic influence. You can be possessed if you're lost and oppressed if you're saved. Amen? Demon oppression sometimes can be just as bad. Y'all hear me? Y'all hear me in the house of the Lord? Amen. 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 Just trying to get caught for a little bit. Amen. 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 I want you to understand that even in the state that he was in, he was a very strong individual in one sense. Amen? The truth is, just because somebody has strength does not mean that they're automatically right with God. Does not mean that they're automatically walking with God. And sometimes we look at people that we feel are strong in some areas and we say, man, they must have a strong relationship with God. But the truth is, if you would look at what was happening, Things that have happened to us in the past, unforgiveness. 
unforgiveness, jealousy, envy, so on, so on. Amen. But here this man is alive, but he's dwelling amongst the dead. There are people in our lives that mean well and love us, but don't really know how to help us. Just as the people in his life, they tried to bind him, and they tried to fix him physically when he had a spiritual problem. Amen? They were trying to save him from himself. They may not have known what was going on with Charlie, John, Jacob, or whatever his name was. Amen? They didn't know what was going on with him, but they knew that he was different. Amen? Amen? And a lot of times we see people that begin to be different, and we say, well, you need to begin to do this, or you need to do that, and we try to give them rules and regulations and boundaries, and it doesn't work. Amen? How many of you are with me? Amen. They knew that he wasn't the same. Sometimes we find ourselves in bad shape. Amen? Notice verse 5 real quickly. And the Bible says, And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying, cutting himself with stones. No one can hurt us like we can hurt ourselves. Amen? Amen? Amen. He was in a situation where he felt like nobody understood what he was going through. And though he seemed strong outwardly, inwardly, he was going through a hard situation. You ever been there when you tried to have a strong face and a strong outer, outer man or woman, but deep down inside you knew that that wasn't what you, who you was and where you was? And you really felt like nobody understood? Amen? Amen. Amen. There was no help. There was nobody to help you out. Amen. Amen. We find ourselves in bad shape. Nobody can hurt us like we hurt ourselves. These, listen, these things that we do to ourselves when no one's around, the things we feed ourselves mentally can really debilitate us. Amen. Amen. You allow yourself to think that you're worth nothing, that nobody likes you, nobody loves you, nobody cares about you. If something was to happen to you, nobody would mourn you. Nobody would come to see you. Nobody cares about you. And you start filling yourself, start filling your mind with that stuff. And my friend, it would take you into some horrible places where the dead dwell. Amen. And you go through stuff. And you do things to try to get rid of an emotional and spiritual problem. This man was crying. He wasn't crying because of the pain that he was afflicted upon himself. He was crying because of the mental and in the mental anguish that he was going through. It caused him that when no one else was around, this man that seemed to be strong whenever someone was around him, and he wasn't able to be tamed, was in such a terrible emotional state that he had no joy within. Amen. Are y'all with me? Amen. Let me say this to you. There may be a few of you in this room that may be going through something similar to this. Yes. If you're not going through it right now, maybe at some point you will. Amen. If you do, you gotta understand that first of all, that you have to be in a situation where you don't feel that no one's around you. Amen. That is all a part of the process. Y'all hear me today? So that's all a part of the process. The first thing that needs to happen is that you need to be able to take your eyes off of people Amen. and stop thinking that somebody is going to help you. Because in this situation, I'm going to tell you something. There was only one person that could help him. Amen. Amen. The question that I had reading this, as this man was alone and cut himself and crying at night in the mountains and in the tombs, why did it take Jesus so long to get to him? You ever ask yourself, Lord, why did it take you so long? Or why is it taking you so long to 
to get to me. Amen. Why is it that it seems like the more I pray, the farther away I get? Amen. Why does it seem that you are helping everyone else Amen. but oblivious to my needs? Amen. To that I say this to you. The Lord knows where you are. Amen. Amen. He knows exactly where you are. As a matter of fact, the reason why Jesus told the disciples, let us pass over unto the other side, was because he knew that there was somebody over there that they had to reach. And this is why the church has to come out of immaturity. Because as long as we're living in immaturity, we are never going to reach the outcast. We're never going to reach the people, my friends, that are struggling. And 
is a demonically controlled man went and fell on his face and he worshipped. And then the demons began to speak to Jesus. We know who you are. Amen. We know who you are. Don't cast us into the deep. Amen. Let us go into the swine and you know the story. But I want you to understand that people will try everything else. You done tried everything. Amen. Let me just encourage you today on Father's Day. Why not try Jesus? Amen. Amen. You done tried everything else. Why not come into his presence and try him? Amen. 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 Nobody can heal you like him. Amen. 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 See, notice verse 15, and I'm done. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed. Somebody say, was possessed. Was possessed. Amen. What is that called? Was possessed. What is that called? And what is it? Past tense. Amen. I want you to understand that when you have a real encounter with Jesus, there are some things that you was going through that no longer have a hold on you. Amen. You see, when you start going through things for a long time, sometimes, my friend, it's because of the fact that you haven't allowed God to have total control of you, to really grab a hold of you. Amen. But this man was possessed. Amen. He was possessed. And notice what it says. With, he was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. And notice the Bible says, and they, the people, were afraid. Amen? Yeah, they was afraid. Amen? See, he went from a man that hung out in the tombs to a man that wanted to hang out with Jesus. Amen? He went from crying and cutting himself to preaching the goodness of God. He said, Lord, let me come with you. Jesus said, go home and tell your friends the good things that God has done for you and had compassion on you. My friend, when you actually get to the other side, it's something what happens. All of the things that bound you, all of the bad things that you had in your head, all of a sudden you realize that it all happened for a reason. Amen. It's all right. Amen. It's all right. That's, that's why we got them up here. We, we good. Amen. Good. Thank God for our young people. Amen. Because, see, the thing is that the enemy wants their minds. It's a horrible thing that's going on. As we sing, we sing them, let drag queens come and read to our kids and, and uh, allow them to influence them and all that kind of stuff. And that's horrible. Amen. 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 That's horrible. Because they are demonically charged and now they're trying to put it on our children. And that's why we have to stand up. Amen. Amen. And we have to say that there's certain things that we should not stand for. Amen, Amen church. Amen. 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 There's certain things that we shouldn't stand for. We don't have a problem with people. Amen. But we just don't want certain lifestyles to be taught to our children. Amen. 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 Now you've got to be careful when you're talking to somebody what gender you give them. Amen. They look like a girl, but they want to be called a him. Right. And then when you start preaching this kind of preaching, they say that you're being hateful. Right. How are you being hateful? Amen. God created male and female. How is that hateful? Amen. 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 But yet, my friend, we're seeing people that are demonically charged, and they're turning against the church. Amen. And the church's light is going out because we're afraid to take a stand. Amen. Let's always stand for Christ. Amen. Always stand for right. Amen. Teach our children. Amen. To stand for right. No matter the consequences. Amen. Amen. And we must stand for right. Jesus showed up on the scene. And he didn't stop playing patty cakes with the demons. Amen. He didn't do that. He didn't start trying to reason with them. Amen. As soon as he showed up on the scene, he said, Come out, man. Amen. I just some of y'all up. See that? That's how it's going. Amen. Just like that. Boom. Just like that. Amen. Wait up. Just 
need you to understand that, anyway, whatever you want me to understand, we must take a stand. Jesus took a stand. He told the disciples to do the same. Amen? And that's how they were able to turn the world upside down. People didn't like their message. But yet there were some that did. Amen? And the disciples turned the world upside down with the doctrine of Jesus Christ. And it's time for the church to do the same. Jesus showed up on the scene. I'm sure the disciples were like, oh my gosh. He's bringing us to the place where this guy's up here and he looks crazy. No clothes on. Of our Lord Jesus Christ, that He came and died on a cross. 
Your name in our neighborhoods and let people know who we are and whose we are. You're here and say, 